So is the Biden administration colluding with social media companies to censor information in order, in order to push President Biden's agenda? Now, this is the charge just filed in California against Facebook, Twitter, President Biden, and the U.S. Surgeon General on behalf of a digital strategist named Justin Hart. Now, Hart had his social media most recently locked for merely posting an infographic that illustrated the lack of scientific research behind forcing kids to wear masks to prevent the spread of COVID. Does he have a case? With me now is Vivek Ramaswamy, author of Woke Inc. Vivek, great to see you. Great to meet you virtually as we are here. Uh, do you think the administration is colluding with social media? I think they implicitly are. And look, I started, I wrote about this first in January in the Wall Street Journal in an op-ed where I, I argued that if the government threatens private companies to be able to do indirectly what the government cannot do directly, that actually constitutes state action. Here, you have not only those government threats where they effectively say, we're going to break you up or we're going to censor you if you don't take down the hate speech or misinformation that we disagree with. But guess what? There's also this special form of governmental immunity called Section 230 that prevents you yeah. from being held liable if you go out and do exactly that. So I think there's both a carrot and a stick. There's direct coordination. And now it's not a conspiracy theory, as people said when I first wrote that op-ed. Now, actually, Jen Psaki is just boasting about it, even in the White House press conference. That's true. So That's there's true. no doubt in my mind that they're working hand in glove together. But, you know, this wasn't even a, uh, an opinion piece that this guy was, was chastised for having, having put out there in social media. It was, it was a, a data point, uh, some data information about masks and their effectiveness or sometimes ineffectiveness. Uh, and it just brings to mind, I mean, I could... You, you know, they're private companies. Yes, they have Section 230 that protect, protects them. Maybe they don't deserve it. Um, but in this case, it was just information, raw data that, that was censored by the companies. Yeah, and I speak as somebody who was trained as a scientist myself. The scientific method depends on open debate. It depends on free speech. It depends on skepticism. And if history teaches us anything... If the last year about COVID teaches us anything, it is that most of our current beliefs will either be proven false or modified in some way. But the only way that we're going to get there is to be able to actually talk about that data, to talk about the facts out in the open. And I think this new approach where there's a ministry of truth centralized in Silicon Valley, further empowered by the government that decides what's right or wrong, is actually not only a threat to democracy, it is a threat to the pursuit of truth through science itself. And I'm sorry to say that we're seeing the worst of that result now. You know, we had the CEOs of these companies uh, meeting before Congress, and at, at least one senator who was, who was uh, grilling, supposedly grilling these people grilled them about not being censorious enough, saying that you should, you should actually censor material uh, that, that questions certain aspects of climate science, for example. We just had a piece in the Wall Street Journal where you had written an article by Jorn Lomborg, who's a climate scientist, and that questioned this thing that we're hearing from the president today as he surveys all these hurricanes, saying it's because of climate change that we have these hurricanes. In fact, Jorn says the frequency category three and above hurricanes making landfall since 1900 is actually trending slightly down. A July Nature paper finds the increase in strong hurricanes you've heard so much about are, quote, not part of a century scale increase, but actually a recovery from a deep minimum in the 1960s and 1980s. So what this senator would want is information like that, scientific information, to be censored completely from the Internet. Look, I think this is a, a, a reality that would make our founding fathers roll over in their graves, because the worst of what they imagined was the government directly censoring private, private parties from being able to say something in the open. Well, now they've found a tripwire in the system, because there's this thing called the First Amendment that prevents the government from doing it. So they're now being able to go through the back door to get private companies to do the government's bidding instead. And I think this is a dangerous path to intellectual totalitarianism. It is a dangerous path to totalitarianism full stop. And I think that what we have seen in censoring COVID so-called misinformation over the last year is coming for you pretty soon with respect to climate change misinformation. You're correct to point it out. Vivek, very quickly, what do you think the companies think that they get out of this? Because there are a lot of Democrats who, who wanted to slam the companies thinking they got too big, uh, apply uh, various uh, FCC laws against what they're what it is they're doing or uh, whatever, SEC laws as well, or regulations. Do you think that they think that the Biden administration might go easy on them if they sing the Biden's tune? 
Absolutely. This is crony capitalism 2.0. It is the equivalent of an arranged marriage. I actually think it's more like mutual prostitution, where Silicon Valley has effectively said that the old left that used to be skeptical of corporate power, now we're going to go to you and say that as long as we moderate content or censor content in ways that you want to censor content online that you don't want to see on the Internet, then we expect you work with your friends in the Democratic Party to look the other way when it comes to leaving our monopoly power intact. And I'm sorry to say that trade is working out masterfully for both sides. It is what's led to the illegitimate birth, in my opinion, of the woke industrial complex, which is far more powerful than either big government or big business alone, because it can do what neither government nor business can do alone. Vivek, you're brilliant. The book is Woke, Inc., in case you haven't guessed from all of the references to woke. Good to see you, Vivek. Thank you very much for coming and come back and see us again. Appreciate it.